Hey everyone, I recently interviewed Malte Peach, co-founder and CTO of DeepSet AI, the creators of the Haystack vector search engine. So please subscribe to Semi Technologies to see the full-length podcast when it's released. But for now, I want to give a quick explanation and uh, like visual illustration of how to use the software for how to combine the functionalities of the Weaviate vector search engine with the Haystack vector search engine. And I think as we look for these tools to create our own retrieve then read pipelines and improve our machine learning workflows, I think these two software tools are a really interesting example of how to combine these things. So hopefully you find this video interesting. So this is the Haystack documentation and it is really organized and really easy to get started using it. I highly recommend checking this out. They have tutorials on how to uh, build your first question answering system, how to uh, say do generative question answering, how to customize a dense passage retrieval, question answering on a knowledge graph, all sorts of really interesting ideas that we're about to get into. So I really like this documentation and it shows you how to, how the, it really describes how you plug and play Weaviate and Haystack together. So Haystack is built up of these pipelines, as you say, have things like the retriever component and the reader component, and maybe you want to have different kinds of retrievers. So maybe you want to have uh, sparse retrievals like BM25, as well as the dense passage retrieval and have different kinds of strategies. Maybe, maybe you fine tune the dense passage retrieval with different kinds of uh, things like maybe you have one that's general purpose trained on MS Marco, and then you have one that's been fine tuned for your data set. And then maybe even within your data set, you have one where you've labeled pairs and then another one where you're using data augmentation to form the pairs, but all sorts of ways that you could have different retrievers and you might want to have more than one uh, retriever in this pipeline as it flows into the reader's input. And then again, with a similar kind of logic, you might want to have different kinds of retrievers as well. So, so this is how you construct these pipelines. And uh, in the pipelines, the primitive is the document, and the document is each of the uh, like the things, the information things. So, say it's say you're searching through scientific papers. Each paper would be one of these documents where document.content has the what's written in the paper. Document. Uh, content type might have text in this case. ID if you have a unique ID. Any metadata as we've looked at things like symbolic annotation, which as we'll get into as we go back to the Weaviate uh, functionality as the vector search kind of database part. So as you have these documents, you have some kind of database, the document store, to put this to put these documents into. So you here are all sorts of the different options. You might have an SQL database. You might just have it in memory, or you'd use the um, the Weaviate uh, database as what's hosting the document store. So you can use Weaviate as sort of like a it's it's like say like MongoDB storing JSON data, and then also enabling these vector search indexes as We'll come back to kind of getting more further into what Weaviate is. It's it combines this kind of uh, GraphQL APIs with this uh, graph structure data linking and JSON data storage, with also storing the neural representations of data, so that you kind of have this neuro symbolic search where you can also use the symbolic tagging. So you would use Weaviate as the document store, and then you extract the data from the Weaviate uh, the database uh, endpoint, and then you plug it into these Haystack pipelines. I highly recommend watching this presentation from Laura Hamm at Semi Technologies on GraphQL at Weaviate and GraphQL for data science, describing this uh, data science with Weaviate and GraphQL, how to use Weaviate as your database solution. So Weaviate, it allows you to upload this JSON data. It has a similar, at least in my conceptual understanding of these technologies, it has kind of a similar functionality as like if all the things you would wanna do with say MongoDB of just trying to put JSON data into a database and then have the GraphQL uh, cross-referencing the way that you link between different uh, classes as you organize different objects in your database as a class and then the properties of the class and then the properties of the class might reference another class and you traverse that graph with the GraphQL API. So all that kind of functionality is, is contained in Weaviate and you can do all that kind of data science stuff with Weaviate but then you have the additional neural search functionality as well with Weaviate and it has the vectorized objects of the data. But you also could disable that and simultaneously have one Weaviate where you just use it like an ordinary JSON database with the GraphQL APIs. And then you can also have one where you have the vectorized indexes, the HNSW graph that speeds up neural search and that kind of functionality. So one thing that I really wanna get into as we look at this combination between Weaviate and Haystack and the different things that different kinds of document stores would offer you, like say this idea of using MongoDB compared to Weaviate or say using SQL compared to Weaviate is the way that Weaviate can integrate symbolic search with the neural search. And I think that's a really unique functionality that I don't think anything else has and makes it a really unique solution for the database end of uh, plugging in your data into the retriever end of these 
end-to-end -end retrieve than read pipelines. So to conclude the understanding of how to plug in uh, WeV8 and Haystack and building on the understanding of WeV8 as a database engine that uh, combines all the functionality of JSON data storage with the neural search functionality and vectorizing data, and then building up approximate nearest neighbor indices like HNSW and also things like say binary passage retrieval and quantization of the vector representations that further facilitates this kind of uh, dot product comparison of vector distances for neural search. But here's a really interesting topic that as I've been interviewing people about Weaviate and learning more about this is something that I see come up a lot is thinking about when you wanna use keyword-based retrieval and when you wanna use neural retrieval. So say uh, you ask a question where you're, uh, a lot of the time you wanna see the keyword of the thing that you've asked the question of in the results. So if you ask a question about say Uber, you'd expect to see Uber in the title of, of the search and what's responded to answer your question about Uber. So a lot of these things you wanna have some kind of keyword functionality and then you also want to have the neural search, which is like the fuzzy semantic similarity of two things as it's comparing. And it's, re it's really a, a different kind of way of searching. And so this uh, part of Haystack is the query classifier where they see a, a, a query and they say, oh, no, this thing needs to have the keyword in it. You should annotate this with the, uh, say the BM, this should go through the BM25 retriever rather than the Siamese BERT retriever or, and routing it through this way by classifying the type of query. But what I think is interesting as we build on these pipelines and integrating the functionality of Weaviate is the ability to simultaneously do HNSW with symbolic filtering. So you can still do these keyword filters or symbolic filter like say the word count of an article or, or the cross-referencing of GraphQL like have this uh, article be published in ICML or published by Stanford University or whatever kind of symbolic filter you're trying to add onto the neural search. You can do all these kinds of things with Weaviate. So this kind of query classifier could really be like a query annotator as you hit the Weaviate document store. And you can take advantage of how Weaviate has the um, has the sim neurosymbolic search as they have integrated the symbolic metadata into the HNSW graph. And the way that it does that small world graph uh, ex expansion of this EF parameter with how many uh, nodes in the graph it's holding at once. But we'll get into the more details about exactly how that works later on. But this kind of idea of classifying the query and integrating this neurosymbolic search closer to the uh, raw retrieval from the database. The following is a clip from the WeVA podcast. Please subscribe to Semi Technologies to check out future episodes of this podcast discussing all sorts of things around AI, deep learning, database systems, and particularly vector search engines. Yeah, and congratulations again on the DeepSec Cloud GUI. It is such an amazing organization of this orchestration layer and a user interface to just point to different data set endpoints, different retriever models. And, and now let's get into kind of these different flavors of retriever models. Uh, you mentioned the idea of combining TFIDF and BM25 with, say, uh, Siamese BERT, Sentence BERT, and having these two different kinds of ways of, um, of uh, different ways of structuring your retrieval model. But I, I kind of think another thing that's interesting as we translate into the connection between the WeV8 document store and then the Haystack pipelines is the idea of uh, symbolic annotation of the neural vectors and of the neural search. So uh, for example, if you're searching through scientific papers and you want to add the symbolic filter uh, published in CVPR, or published in ICML, or authored by a particular uh, well, let's say an institution could say an author might not have that many publications such that you need to really do a neural search through it. But these kind of symbolic filters on top of the uh, neural search, have you thought a lot about what, how that kind of changes neural search and how that kind of uh, maybe offers another way of looking at the retrieval uh, pipelines between say TFIDF BM25 being one thing and then vector distance being a different thing? Yeah, I think that's a, a, an absolutely brilliant feature of, that we <laughs> has. And, uh, and actually, um, I think differentiates Weaver to um, to many of the other vector search engines out there. And um, for us, uh, was also I think the one of the main reasons why we uh, integrated that into Haystack, um, because we heard that a lot from the community. We saw that a lot in our um, with our own customers. Um, that really this combination of um, say uh, um, structured data and metadata that you can filter plus uh, uh, vector search is uh, is super powerful and. Um, um, I mean, first of all, it's a nice, nice way to kind of uh, narrow down your search space. So if you have really like millions of documents, in most use cases, there is some, some text, some, I don't know, time stamp, something that you can, that helps you to narrow down your search space immensely. And uh, this, of course, is a direct, direct impact on, uh, on the search quality. Um, 
And at the same time, of course, it's tricky to implement. Uh, so it's, uh, um, it really has to, I think, be um, closely tied to the vector search engine um, uh, and has to happen if you have something like approximate nearest neighbors, um, which I think is quite important at, uh, in production deployments. Um, then uh, yeah, it becomes tricky, and um, and yeah, but having this combination, I think, is uh, super nice. And in general, I would say, leveraging metadata or structural information is uh, is, uh, is super helpful. Um, one thing, for example, on our roadmap that you want to explore further is as well to to leverage document structure uh, even more, so that you can ex let's say you have um, a PDF, uh, so you have like a lot of titles in there. Uh, maybe captions of images, and as of today, most uh, most search engines and, uh, and models um, treat that in the end as similar, like plain text. Uh, but really using this information, hey, this is a, another headline, or um, this is I don't know the the, the title of the, the chapter. Um, this is, makes makes life so much easier at, uh, at query time, um, and uh, I think also for uh, like building embeddings then for these kind of. Uh, information is, uh, is, a, is a nice direction in future that we not say, do hard filtering or then uh, BM25 on this uh, kind of metadata, but really embed those titles, embed the whole document structure and, uh, and use that at query time. Mm -hmm.